okay so now the thickness of the two way slab can be decided based on the deflection criteria as usual similar to that which were considered in the design of beams or you can say design of a one way slab also so first of all first point is checking the actual deflection against the allowable limits and the second point will be based on the maximum span to depth ratio that is l by d ratio specified for serviceability criteria which can be assumed to be not exceeding span by 250 so based on these two points we can uh, uh, first of all decide what should be the thickness of slab which we can uh, take as a trial and uh, later on after doing the various calculation and applying various checks we will be uh, just came to understand that whether our assumption is correct or not so accordingly the section can be revised so overall uh, thickness of the slab that is capital D we can say can be evaluated as it is equal to the sum of uh, effective span plus key clear cover and uh, half of the bar diameter the main reinforcement here we have to keep in mind that whenever we are doing any calculation and uh, since there are two span lx and ly so what we have to take into consideration we will be focusing on shorter span so that means when we are going to calculate this effective uh, depth of the slab or uh, overall depth of the slab then we have to take into consideration the center line of the main reinforcement that is which is along the shorter span and the clear cover again we can take as per the requirement based on the information available in clause number 26.4 based on what is the exposure condition and what should be the minimum uh, clear cover required and uh, similarly another uh, guideline is diameter of steel bar maximum diameter of steel bar should not be greater than one eighth of the total thickness of the slab that is overall thickness of the slab and uh, we can refer clause number 26.5.2.2 here now in continuation to step number three where we have discussed about the thickness of slab and uh, very important part of uh, this step is that how to decide what should be the effective depth of the slab and we can refer clause number 24.1 and based on this value which we will assume for effective depth of the span we can later on calculate overall depth of the slab now vertical deflection limits may generally be assumed to be satisfied provided that the span to depth ratio are not greater than the value mentioned here onward uh, it may be the case of a beam or it may be case of a slab which is having uniform thickness so deflection generally we can uh, limit as per the following guidelines so case number one we can see as uh, in reference to clause number 23.2.1 that means we can take basic value of span to depth ratio when the span length is that means shorter span having length uh, up to 10 meters then we can uh, take it as a case number one and uh, we can take the l by d ratio equal to 20 as normally we have taking in case of beams also and if uh, for span is greater than 10 meters then accordingly we can multiply it with a factor that is 10 by span length and uh, so uh, by this step we will be able to get span by d ratio and uh, these basic values that is l by d is equal to 20 which need to be multiplied by modification factor that is kt and uh, that kt factor will depend upon the area of steel as well as the stress of the tensile steel and uh, for this we can uh, take the value from figure number 4 of is456 now in reference to clause number 24.1 that means if we consider it as a case 2 then if you refer clause number 24.1 and in the notes part you will find this information that first point is for slabs which are spanning in two directions that means two-way slab the shorter of the two spans 
should be used for calculating the span to factor depth ratio. So that means here a uh, very important point is that L x by d ratio when we have to calculate then uh, this L should, Lx should be the shorter span length. So here uh, since we have two type of span one is shorter and another is longer span. So for the calculation purpose we will always take shorter span as uh, Lx and a longer span Ly. Now for two way uh, slabs having shorter span if this condition is satisfied that mean the shorter span is uh, having uh, span length up to 3.5 meter and if you are using mild steel reinforcement then span to effective depth ratio can be taken as or can be assumed which is considered to be satisfying the vertical deflection limit and another condition is for loading class up to 3 kN per meter square. So then uh, span to effective depth ratio we can take in case of a simply supported slabs since we are going to discuss all the guidelines regarding simply supported. So L x by d ratio we can take equal to 35 and keep in mind this uh, ratio can be taken when uh, reinforcement which you are taking that is a mild steel. Now if you are using high strength steel as normally in practice we use then uh, having grade Fe415 then above value that is value 35 we can multiply it by a factor that is 0.8. So that means if a second case is of in your problem that means having shorter span length less than or maybe equal to 3.5 meter and uh, if loading condition is this much then you can take Lx by D 35 instead of 20 and uh, since uh, we are using high strength steel normally so then this 35 will be multiplied by 0.8 so that will become the Lx by D ratio again to remind you that Lx is the length of the shorter span.